How you doing, guy? Where'd you get them pictures? Oh, that's hardly important. I guess. I mean, all she did was suck his cock and try and steal your money. It could have been worse. Um. Well, no, I suppose that's about as bad as it gets. Hello, folks. This is uh, Cinebeef Presents Bur The Burnt Ends. This is uh, that tasty part of the brisket, you know, that you uh, you love oh so much. Or maybe not, you know. And in this case, I'm some pretty rancid chicken. We'll talk about that pretty soon. And um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh man, with me tonight, and the only person I can I can share this level of white trash with because I know she she loves she loves these people watching them out here on uh, <laughs> the Terrible Life Choices channel and Discovery Plus, all that stuff. And she hears a lot about these kind of people. Is the oh, lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely Iris? How you doing? Hello, hello, Gary. How are you, sweetheart? Oh, I'm here. I'm here. It's uh right on. It's it was seventy some degrees today and at the end of August in, in Indiana and I uh I couldn't be happier, you know. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, lovely. What a movie, let me tell you. Yeah. Um this isn't necessarily a, a, a tribute to the man. It's just a dark spot in my viewings of this man's work. This is Billy Freakin's Killer Joe from two thousand eleven. Um, one of the last things he ever did, and oh, 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 oh what a last, one of the last things he ever did. I, 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 I dig it, but I feel dirty afterwards, let's put it that way. Because it's, <laughs> <laughs> your cheapo plot synopsis is, when a dead puts a young man's life in danger, he turns to pu pu putting out a hit, a hit out on his evil mother in order to collect the insurance. Uh, this is directed uh, by William Freakin. This is uh, written by Tracy Lutz, uh, based on his stage play, which is very interesting. Um, had a great cast on that. We'll, we'll talk about that in, in the nine months it was on. <clears throat> but this film stars Matthew McConaughey, all right, all right, all right, as Killer Joe Cooper. Uh, Emil Hirsch, it was the actor, I got, I got a lot of time for Emil Hirsch and stuff, as Chris Smith. Uh, Juno Temple as Dottie Smith, Thomas Hayden Church as Ansel Smith, Gina Gershon as Charlotte Smith. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mark McCauley as Digger Soames. We got some other folks in here. Blah 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 blah. Oh yeah, that's that's, that's pretty much your principal players. There's, there's other people in here, yeah. but you know, that's how, like I, I, I like I like this cast like small, which is kind of wonderful. Um, mm. this this is this is a. Okay, you feel dirty after watching this movie. I I, I got to hear <laughs> Iris's thoughts on uh, initial thoughts on this one. Go go for it, girl. Oh my God, this yeah. So it does kind of make you feel a little dirty. It's kind of like you're watching something and you're going, Oh my God, what am I watching? And this is lovely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is good. This is good. Um. Do you want me to keep uh, just give you my thoughts on this? Yeah, the go whole for, thing? go for it, girl. Okay, so um, the the plot synopsis, mm, okay, pretty good. All right, it, this that's basically the whole plot of this movie, right? But you have this character development for the dad, which was Ansel, uh, Dottie, uh, Chris, Sharla. And then, of course, Killer Joe. And just the development of these characters is just so beautiful. Like Dottie, she, um, I'd have to say she's a bit simple. Um, and, of course, it's Juno Temple. I mean, Ted Lasso's Kelly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that's, a, um, that's a show I still need to watch. I haven't watched And I love Jason Sudeikis, so I don't know why it's such a blind spot for me to watch that show. Dude, it is so much fun. I am on season three, and I am so upset because that's as far as it goes. But anyway, um, she um, she plays a great part in this uh, because if you really think about it, um, you kind of come out thinking that uh, Joe Cooper and Chris Smith are going to be the two main characters. But as the movie progresses, as you're starting to get into the plot of the whole thing, it's really Dottie. Everything comes about because of Dottie. Um, 
Chris's character, character, of course, he is very protective of Dottie, his sister. So what happened with his sister was, um, I guess mom didn't want her and tried to kill her as a baby um, and tried to uh, snuff her, you know, with a with a pillow, uh, but uh, really didn't kill her. So I think that lack of oxygen for a little while as a baby kind of twisted a few things in her head. And um, it turned out to be pretty good. Um, it's a, a story of a double cross, triple cross, I guess, something like that. Um, but I really, really enjoyed how the characters interacted with each other, how Ansel and um, Chris, uh, father and son, how they interacted. Um, and then you have this character, Rex, that you c- kind of comes out of left field. <laughs> yeah, it's mama's, boy- um, it's mama's boyfriend is what it was. Yeah, mama's boyfriend, Rex. And Gina Gershon is Ansel's uh, second wife. And, and, you know, not to give a lot of stuff away, it's it's just this beautiful amalgam of all of these characters, kind of how they are playing around each other and um, Dottie in the middle. And I'll have to tell you, this this here, I'd have to say, is one of my favorite Matthew McConaughey roles. I had not seen this movie until you mentioned it. And this role he plays is so out of left field for him and he did it so fucking well that um i'd have to say it's my favorite out of all of the roles that i've seen him in this has to be my favorite you know he's a cop he's an assassin he is a cruel motherfucker but yet he has a soft spot for Dottie, and he is just psychotic and it's beautiful to watch him play this character and um, the ending, I'd have to say at first, the ending pissed me off. It, it shapes up into something glorious, though, I think. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it does, right? But it kind of pisses you off a little because you're like, wait, what? But then I guess you can uh, make your own ending up, really. Whether you want, depending on what side you fall on, if, like if you're still the moral upstanding person or you are kind of like a psychotic fuckhead like um you know killer joe is um i guess you could land on either side but um yeah this movie kind of left me a little like oh my god what did i just fucking watch but you know in a good way i i extremely enjoyed it um mcconaughey juno they i mean they blow their 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 rolls out of the water in this and it's just it's just beautifully white trash crazy and i don't think anything could top this yeah at least nothing modern uh some of the older movies yeah sure but modern stuff i don't think so those are my two cents i got you babe yeah but the thing is I, I, what I love about this film if you watch it you know the way the way freaking has these characters you know dressed and you know their, their body image. If you look at what, what you're looking at there, everybody else is kind of dirty and unkempt in the movie, whether it's their hair or like dirt on their face or to the makeup. point, the makeup or to, to the point where Chris gets the shit kicked out of him by, by the mob guys. He has money to, he's all bruised up and those don't really go away. The only clean guy in the whole movie is Joe. Mm-hmm. And to, to, to the point to where the dog barks at everybody in the film and doesn't bark at him. And, <laughs> And if you look at the film, you look at the narrative, I mean, Dottie, you know, she, she's just, you, 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 you call her innocent, okay? And, and you should, because she starts out that way. Because mm-hmm. essentially, they, they, they hire Joe to kill kill the mother to get this money, but they won't have his money until she until the deed is done. So, the, he, he pulled, and this is a terrible thing to say about a person, he sees Dottie, and he... He holds her as as a like a like a token to say yeah, this, she's this a marker. Yeah, she's a marker <laughs> to say you know this is mine if you don't have my money. So the, the parents, I mean, I mean the the father and and the, the stepmother, and, and and Chris to an extent is is um are really grooming Dottie, you know, to to be his lover, to be his thing. You know, they 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 go to the thrift store to buy her a dress, they clean her up, and she she doesn't. She's nervous about about this dinner with Joe, even though she thinks he's just a dinner. But at the same time, you know, she feels safe with him r- right there because he's she's never known like this anybody with a spine really. 
you know, her mother is spineless, her, her father is spineless, her brother is spineless. She got this sure dude, this sure dude, you know, she's having dinner with and is impressed with this casserole who, um, <laughs> and she's like, all right. And yeah, they have a very passionate lovemaking scene, which for why yeah, that, oh, I'm sorry. That first scene. Ooh. I mean, from what I understand, you know, in, in real life, I guess she really felt safe with Matthew McConaughey. That's why she, she, cause he's that nice of a guy, I guess. Mm-hmm. And he, he coached mm-hmm. her a little bit in the acting section, like I work with like a major director because she never did it before, so he was giving her a lot of tips and stuff, and she really fell safe with him. <laughs> so if we, we see the scene, we see that scene where he's, like, giving it to her, you know, it's passionate because she'll let it be passionate. And, you know, that that's, it's a pretty powerful scene in that sense. It but, is. But you see Joe, everybody else has fucking dirt on their hands as far as, like, physical, you know, um, metaphorically, they're all fucking dirty. Charlotte's sh- sharing pictures of dudes, dudes, dicks that she sucks, but you, f- but you find out it's somebody close to them. So again, another fucking double cross happens. Mm. You know, a- Ansel's just a fucking cuck and a half, you know, who's uh, uh, only, who only really asserts himself at the end of the movie when you find out that Starla's a big fucking whore. And <laughs> Joe jo br- jo brings it up, br- shows the pictures, and, you know, uh, you know, who stick is that, Charla? Come on now, you know it's. it's <laughs> it, it, is that your dick, Joe? Is that your dick, or Joe? No, is that it, your it, dick, Ansel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> really gross shit, but at the same time, he, he's you know as bad as Joe is, he he kills people and, and covers it up. He's he's a dirty cop, you know. But in in the end, there's there's a real love for Dottie there because when, mm-hmm. when you when, when you get to the end, the very very end. When she reveals what she reveals, and he has this big old fucking shitting grin on his face, you'd think it was his fucking birthday or something, you know? Right, Because right. all this shit happens, you know, what happens with Chris happens. Again, I don't want to give a whole lot away, but, you, you, you know, n- nobody is clean except for Joe and Dottie by the end of this movie. It's just, right. just nobody's clean. They just, you know... She, she's going to run away with him and, you know, be together eventually, and... Uh, they make some odd soundtrack uh, choices in this mm-hmm. movie. You know, if you like Clarence mm-hmm. Carter, that's that's what you hear in the, in the end credits of this movie. You know, <laughs> I'll be stroking. You know, <laughs> it's so fucking weird that that shows up at the very end of this movie. It's like, yeah, I guess he's they're gonna go fuck now. And, you know, I just you know, because it's just so sleazy. So why not put a sleazy song following the very end of this movie? <laughs> But it's it's really good though. I mean, the one scene where um, he finally reveals the when Sharla is like, "Well, yeah, you know, a hundred, a hundred thousand. He's like, "Oh, it's a hundred. and she's like, "Well, or fifty or whatever." And what he does to her, and how he is talking to her, and um, wow, At that you know, it it kind of it, it left me that whole scene. Where I mean, okay, so I, I'm just gonna say it. Where he is holding a drumstick, and she tells him to give him a blowjob, yeah, which call, is basically just, the drumstick. Yeah, drumstick fellatio. Just, drumstick. just just call it what it is. Yes, okay, drumstick you know? fellatio. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's put, okay. There you go. What a unforgiving scene, Gina Gershon. I mean, give her the part of Lucy Lovelace because what she did was pretty amazing with that drumstick and how he, when he was talking and the way he was moving and uh, just the tremble and I, it was just, it was fucking amazing. I mean, Dude, this he, movie did not get he fucking, the he fucking finishes. that it needed. He fucking right? finishes. He does. <laughs> he does. Right. And, and I'm thinking, why did this movie not get the accolades that it did? Right. So it kind of reminds me of, um, the Boston Strangler, right? The Tony Curtis movie. I mean, it had people, huge people, Henry Fonda, um, our our favorite black vampire. Um, you know, Tony Curtis had so many people, but because Hollywood uh, saw it as a grindhouse type of movie, it never got the accolades that it deserved. And I think this is kind of maybe a little bit of the same thing. Um, it was just a really weird movie for Matthew McConaughey to be in. 
especially the character he played. So it, I don't think this movie gets the attention that it needs because this movie needs some attention. I mean, William Freakin, towards the end of his career, was doing some really interesting things. Mm -hmm. he, he did this and he did Bug before this. Have you seen Bug before with Ashley oh Judd my, and Michael Shannon? Oh, I love that movie. It's, it's, not, Again, it's, it's not about bugs. It's, it's, it's about fucking paranoia. And it's written by the same person, too. Right. And it's another play, right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, at the time, I don't think, um, you know, movie plays that were transcending into the movie stage, uh, people weren't really into them. They wanted to, you know, the flashes and the bangs and the Transformers type of bullshit. But, th I mean, this movie and Bug are, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to say they're intelligent movies. There are movies where the characters get developed in a way that you feel yourself that you're actually emotionally investing yourself in them. And, and movies like that, I mean, the, movies like that we, are the type of movies that we need to watch, that need to be made. And the kind that we, you know, word of mouth, dude, word of mouth, watch this fucking movie and tell somebody about it because you guys are going to love it. I just know you will. Yeah, it's it's it's. It's, it's it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's the little stuff that that you know, an age filmmaker does to to, to you know, it, it is a filthy film about disgusting, deplorable people. But but you, you know what? It's just the little stuff in there to say if if you watch it like with with, with I, I guess I don't even call it cut glasses. I I'm, I'm I'm losing words here. You, you would look at at um Matt McConaughey as the bad guy, but he's not all the way the bad guy. He's just doing. What he was willed to do, and he, he he wants he wants payment for what he does. Which initially, it's not like lust. He like falls in love with this this little little wafy female, and you know she 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 comes to enjoy his company. It's not like you know she was a whore or anything. I mean, fuck's sake, when mm -hmm. Chris, when when Chris gets beat up by the mob guys, he's fucking staying in their goddamn trailer. They're, they're sleeping in the same bed, you know, and it's 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 not you know that's. That's love, you know, as far as th that's concerned. It, it's, a, it's a twisted love. It came about from, from a wrong direction, you know, but, but, but it is what it is. He, he is the cleanest person in this movie, as far as, like... Yep, they both are. Yeah, they both are. And to say, oh, you know, what happens next, then it was turns into, you know, one of the most uh, awkward dinner scenes ever at the end of this movie, because mm. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Donnie makes her announcement, the, the fucking look on all their faces... I mean, to the point of, you know, Ansel is even a little happy about this. You know, Gina, Charlotte, Gina Gershon is bleeding from the nose from the fucking pummeling from the one punch she took from Killer Joe. <laughs> she, yeah. she, she's still kind of happy about this. And one of, our, I, one of our characters are on the floor. He, he, right? he, he ain't saying nothing, obviously. You know, but it's so twisted, but so right at the same time. It's like like, like the perfect conclusion for this movie. Right. It's a, and it, it's a perverted ending and not perverted as in, you know, like uh, sexual, but perverted as in so fucking twisted that it kind of makes you feel dirty a little too. the ending, because, you know, you kind of like you're siding with Joe and Dottie. <laughs> and it kind of makes you feel dirty. Like, Oh wow. Because I want them to win. <laughs> It's 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 a it, it's a fucked up ending, but just talk to the kids. This so, this right? is how this is how I met your mother. Let me tell you a story, you know. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> First of all, your your step grandma. <laughs> oh my god. That's okay. Yeah. She 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 brought home the K fry C in more ways than one. So you know it's it's uh. Uh huh. Yes, she did. K, K fry C, you know. <laughs> Chicken drumstick fellatio, which. Uh, <laughs> So she did very well. Apparently, that's that's part of the, the play that scene. And so she, she, she Gina Gershon said that she couldn't imagine doing that eight times eight times a week on, on a stage. You know. Oh my God! The, the, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Apparently, it's true. Oh, uh, uh. Oh, uh, it's, it's it's um it's a dark part of that movie, but it, at the same time, they're just filthy fucking people. They're, they're filthy mm. people. So you're, they you're, deserve it, all right. You, they deserve it. I would say they deserve it, but you're not surprised by anything that happens. You're just not surprised, no. you know, that, 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 that you know you didn't know didn't know it was going to go there. I just the first I watched a couple times for this for this review, but the first time I watched it, I'm like, she's doing what to the drumstick now, you know? 
Because <laughs> he, he, he just keeps on going back and forth or going up and down on this fucking drumstick and the faces that he's making, the, the fuck faces that he's making. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. W- when he finishes, I was like, yeah, this is... He's kind of sick, but at the same time, I was like, "Yeah, this is the woman. The first time you meet her, which you know, she she wore a a, a um a piece for her her, her bo- bottom area, where uh she opens the door to her 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 you know bottomless uh, half, all up in the Emil Hirsch's face, you know, maybe and mm-hmm. it's a stepmother. Who answers the door like that? Th- this woman does. Okay, she does. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> It's just so goofy from the beginning, right? Right from the beginning, I, I just, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta recommend this to people because the reason why I saw it, why I even knew it was a thing, is because it made a lot of lists. You, you make, you make friends on on the internet, and they say t- to watch something, and you see another you friend say it. to watch something. They're like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch this movie. It took a long time for me to get to it, but I'm damn glad I did because this is this is my kind of white trash, and I yes. I, yes. I'm, I'm glad I got to share with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, who do you, yeah, I mean, this is a perfect white trash movie, and who loves more white trash movies than I do, <laughs> besides Mike? Yeah. <laughs> and Mark. <laughs> yeah, and Mark. Which does you think would dig this, too? Well, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they go about 20 minutes on the, 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 the chicken leg fellatio scene alone, because you know, that's, <laughs> I love those guys to death. They're like, yeah, this, this is what happens in this movie. Yes. Uh, apparently on the physical release, there's the um, there's the uh, NC-17 rated version of this movie, so I might have to go go seek that out because right now you can watch uh, the rated version on Amazon Prime for free. So if you like what, what we're laying down, you, you want mm-hmm. you, you want to watch this, um, yeah, go go watch this because it's it's um it's pretty good, you know, for for as as much as we're talking about it, you know, saying hey, you know. This this bad thing. These are deplorable people. They are they are all deplorable people, but mm-hmm. it, but it's filmed and acted so so well. And it really is. Yeah, go check it out. Um, any final thoughts on this film for you, Iris? Um, no, just a re- reiteration of um, this movie. It it's obviously kind of like you were saying. It's a lot of word of mouth. It did not get um, maybe the accolades I feel it should have. I don't even remember hearing that uh, he was in this movie so uh yeah i'm most definitely please go watch this movie it's it's really good you're gonna love it it's gonna surprise you it has everything that uh an exploitation movie needs yeah i gotta give the mvp to to juno temple because like you said she seems like she seems like that real like ditzy girl like you said maybe she she had a bit of the baby brain you know when her mother tried to kill her in the womb but she, she makes that churn to, to to where, you know, she turns from this little wavish, you know, girly trick, even, even right away. You know, when she hears the plan about killing Mama, she's like, oh, that doesn't seem like a bad idea at all. Like, she just, what she just say just now? Like, she, she she's all for it, you know? Yeah, she's like, I heard you talking about killing Mom. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> even right then. You, you know, she had a brain in her head, but in, in the end, you know, she... she 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 made a decision for you know herself. I, obviously, she could have ran, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although Joe had, had had the marker on her to say, you know, if she's gone, uh, I'm I'm gonna kill all you guys or something. Because at that point, at that point, he was stoned in love with the girl, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I just I just gotta give it to McConaughey because he literally comes out smelling like a rose and then this filthy film. And again, the cleanest guy in the movie, you know, physically metaphorically he's just doing a job these people are are deplorable and into some stuff and it's just all the time you know I, i'm just glad ansel's not a cuck anymore by the end of this movie he's like yeah but by the way you know <laughs> after she gets punched right, in the ball right. she, she, she goes you made your bed now you're lying you're like yeah no shit here you go you go ansel you know right right oh, and, and everybody was out for themselves besides the only people that weren't out for themselves was Joe and Dottie. Yeah. Everybody else was. Yeah, so I I, I dig it. Go, go go look for it. You know. Go look for mm-hmm. bug. Go look for bug too. Again, this this late cycle William Freakin stuff is, is exceptional and not too many folks talk about him. And that makes especially Bug, which was more commercially successful, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. You get some good Michael Shannon, who, who Michael Shannon starred in um, the stage play of this, and I didn't. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it was it was a big old cast. I'm, I'm gonna find that right now. Oh, it's here we go. It ran off Broadway in 1998 for nine months. Starred Scott Glenn, Amanda Plummer, Michael Shannon, and Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson? Yeah, so this is a big old cast for, for for a Broadway show. I mean, Shannon does a lot of, a lot of shows around at, at um. He 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 has a partial owner, a full owner of a theater in Chicago, and he does oh, really? he does he does a lot of a lot of like shows. If he, if you catch it on the right night, you could go go around like the Steppenwolf Theater, the bars around there, and you might find him in one of them just hanging out. So you know. <laughs> Damn. All right. So Shannon's a personable dude. I love that about him. It just um, that's awesome. And this is awesome. Um, I received you recorded a show last night and. Yes, I did. And you have another other other other, that other thing with with Mike and um my my fellow Hoosier Jim, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that, that would was, be Saturday. That was very cool to find out, by the way. You could tell him I said that, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. He's a really nice dude. Oh my gosh! T- tell us about what you got coming up, girl. Okay. Well, um, the episode uh, just dropped off of We Saw the Devil, and that is at We Saw the Devil dot com. And it's basically um, the Taylor Shabizness case. You know, the gal who, again, another blowjob while she was cutting her boyfriend's dick off. Um, But that was for real. Uh, So, yeah, that was really, it it was a very interesting discussion. And, um, you know, if you guys stay tuned and you keep listening, um, you find out that both Robin and I are um, horror aficionados. And we're going to be also... Reviewing the Nun and the Nun Two uh, before Halloween, so stick around for that one. You, you tell uh, you tell Robin she's welcome to come on the show whenever she wants to. Oh heck yeah, I will tell her that. You, you keep Mike away from me. I don't like that guy very much. You know he's kind of well. You know he's kind of a douchebag. As I'll just throw it out there. Yes, he he's an asshole. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we love him. He, I love that man. He knows us. <laughs> Yeah, and then, of course, uh, with uh, that sort of weird, uh, Mike is going to be, uh, his topic is going to be um, Dorothea Puente, who is um, basically the old lady serial killer who was killing indigents and people. She would bring them into her house, kill them, bury them in her backyard, and collect their social security checks. That, that basically- old scam, right, you know? Right, right, right. And since there were mostly indigents and uh, people who had no family, um, nobody would know the better. Yeah. Wild, wild stuff, So that's stuff, basically girl. it. Wild, wild so, stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sin and Beef, I don't know what we're doing next. Um, I'm thinking of something baseball related, so um, it, that might be a thing because the season's oh, almost yeah, over. Yeah. We, haven't done that, we haven't done that yet this season, so we might as well <laughs> uh, make it happen and – if Suzanne's available, because she's um, they're in the pennant race here with the Chicago Cubs, so she she's uh she, she's she's all she's all about it. You know that's fine, but um, oh yeah, whatever we can make happen. Um, yeah, more of these coming. You know, I'm supposed to record one with Cameron um, coming very soon. Actually, I thought it would be the next one, but Cameron got busy. Cameron's um, a busy man with his with his job and stuff, but. Wasn't too busy last night. We me and him, me, him and Lee to record a brand new last call of torches. Uh, we nice. did we did Wild Bill, and if you shoot over to the Legion Patreon, you can get the, a review of the Shootist with John Wayne and Lauren Bacall. That that was a uh, that's the bonus mm. episode. Uh, we're doing something very exciting for the for the next episode. Um, it's, a, it's a true blue classic of uh, for the Patreon and and Cameron's favorite Walter Hill. I think it is, or it's right up in there. Um, Besides that, I have something cooking with my uncle. Um, I'm still working out the details of what the show is is gonna be, but um, he's a uh, he's my mother's oldest brother, my uncle Eric. He's always been a big fan of old Hollywood, you know. Learned from my grandmother, who was a big fan of old Hollywood too. And I, I kept saying that we're gonna do something together. And um, he's retired now, and I'm looking forward to to saying. You know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm I'm buying him a microphone and some studio headphones, and um, nice. we're going to talk about some old Hollywood to to where he he picks one. Uh, his first pick is It Happened One Night, which is a Frank Ca- oh. Frank Capra movie. Um, Clark Gable and the woman I don't recall her name, but it's Clark Claudette Gable. Colbert. Okay, you got me, girl. And the plan is because you know something becomes nostalgic thirty years later. 
for me to find a film that came out 30 years after his film that's similar to his film. So this so requires some research on my part. So um, I, I'm tossing around names here for what the show is going to be called, but it's 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 coming soon to Legion Podcast. And my uncle is a bit, a bit of a historian, so he's he's going to be rambling off some facts and giving us an education on some old Hollywood stuff. And he's uh he he loves that stuff, and I, I've been meaning to do nice. this with him, you know. So uh, don't mind him; he's new, but he knows he knows the subject matter very very well. Excellent. But um, y'all ever want to, you know, throw a third in there?